Brought to you by GTA. We start with you. It began with a medical procedure for her daughter in Hawaii. It was then that Monica Broussard and her daughter Maya began what would be their first round of quarantine in a government facility. Now back on Guam, Monica tells her story of being held involuntarily at the Dusatani. We landed here. It was around 8.30ish. Um, you're just coming in. And honestly, at that point, I felt like just the number on that flight. Um, they never asked us why we were returning, um, how, what's, your, what's your health state, nothing. According to Monica, health officials were present at the airport, but they were only there to issue health clearances. There are people that look distraught. There are people that were barely walking. There are people in wheelchairs, but I mean, you know, they'll tell you, go to this line, go to this line. After getting processed at the airport, passengers then had to wait a few more hours for bus transportation to the Dusitani, only to arrive to the quarantine site, which took hours again. By the time she and her daughter got to their room, it would be past midnight. All the while, Monica says she made it clear that her daughter just had surgery, she had the proper documentation for an emergency hardship, and they both have underlying health issues. The guardsmen and the reservists, I have to say they worked really hard. I mean, they, I, I will tell you, they were set up for failure. There was no public health person on site at that time to answer any questions. If I had a question, all the guardsmen said were, I'm sorry, you'll have to refer that to a public health official. They're the only ones who can answer it. Monica says a public health official came later in the morning, but despite qualifying for an emergency hardship, she wants to give families that have more urging reasons for release the opportunity. But she's drawing attention to deeper issues, such as the exceptions that have been made to previous passengers. My last name ain't nothing. When we were getting down after immigration, there are people separating different ways, and I'm like, okay, is it because that person has special privileges? I thought that once you land, everybody goes on this mandatory quarantine. Regardless of who you are, it should be done. And Monica doesn't draw it there. She asked a question many of us have been wondering. Why is it that if someone tests positive, they have the option to isolate at home? But for those returning to bury their loved ones, say their final goodbyes, or are returning from off-island medical procedures, why are they not given the same treatment? I hope that the government officials are watching this right now and listening. The process is broke. You would think um, after almost seven months, something is figured out. But I challenge those high officials. I, I bet no one will call me within 30 days, you know, to ask me, hey, let's work together. How can, how can you help me help the government? Help, I'll help you. If you want me to write down everything and, and what I think, you know, how you can help other people, I guarantee you, I guarantee you no one will call me. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Brought to you by GTA. We start with you.